As I was crossing the Canadian Arctic skiing here, I had realized that my dream had become a reality. It was reality of making adventure learning come alive into millions of classrooms around the world. As a K-12 educator, a few years ago, I was trying to motivate my students. I was trying to get them excited about what I was teaching to them. I was teaching them geography. I was using a textbook that was over 10 years old, and I just could not get them motivated. Now, it probably had a lot to do with me, but I thought to myself, why isn't it that we are bringing the world into the classroom? Why don't we use technology in a way that we've never used it before? Why can't we do this? I knew that we could do it, so I set out because I also had a passion for the environment. At the same time, I was working for the National Geographic Society. And I was reading, and I was experiencing what was happening in the Arctic. I knew things were changing. And I thought to myself, why can't we get students to understand how their actions in the mid-latitudes are impacting these regions? In fact, the areas that you see here, we can't travel like I did 10 years ago because of the changes within this location. I wanted students to be engaged. I wanted students to feel this excitement as you see the students getting excited about the Go North Adventure Learning Series. I wanted them to be talking about it. I wanted them to go home and tell their parents and tell their guardians. In other words, I wanted to create change in education and not simply respond to it. I didn't want to just do what someone else had done. I wanted to see if we could motivate students, if we could engage them. And many people believe this cannot happen in education. Many people believe it can't, but I believe that we can. And so, since 2004, I've been delivering adventure learning projects from around the world in order to motivate students, in order to motivate their teachers, in order to create change within the classroom and outside of the classroom. I'm Aaron Deering from the U of M. To truly understand our impact on the natural world, you have to experience it firsthand. So this, this is my classroom. Students from around the world join our team online as we research climate change in the Arctic. Together, we learn about our environment and how our actions can make a difference. So the search continues. That dog sled was just on the way into work here in Minnesota. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite nice. When you give a talk, you know, somewhere else, they was like, wow, in Minnesota, it's like, okay, that, that's normal. Um, so, so adventure learning, what's it all about? I'm not going to bore you with the specifics other than to tell you that we identify an issue in a place. It might be the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge focused on oil drilling like we did in 2006. We write a curriculum that is inquiry-based, that has levels, different levels of integration in order that the teachers can use it throughout all the classes. We think about what the adventure is. What is it that's going to motivate those students and motivate those teachers to be part of it? We think about how students can collaborate, not only with each other in the classroom, but literally throughout the world, and not only the students, but also the teachers and also the experts. So we might bring Dan Dixon from the Weather Channel to come and talk to us about climate change as we're studying this and delivering it from the field. We provide sync learning opportunities. That means what the students are studying with the curriculum, we are delivering from the field, and they're also getting it from the experts, so it's all working together. And that delivery from the field is with the media artifacts. In real time, we're sending audio, video, everything that we possibly can so the students can understand what it's like to be there. And we know the last thing that teachers have is time, and thus we provide the pedagogical guidelines so that they can quickly integrate it. It's Sunday night. They don't know exactly how they're going to teach it. It's there for them. And then finally, we deliver it in a way that it can be delivered throughout the entire world via the internet. The first adventure learning project was Arctic Transect 2004. We left Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories and dog sledded across the Canadian Arctic for six months. We hit the north end of the Baffin Island Pond Inlet, and we realized that we had over three million learners that were following along with us, that were motivated what was by what was happening. I put a circumpolar map down, and I said, hey guys, we were successful. Why don't we do the entire circumpolar Arctic? And as you probably can imagine, they said, no, there's no way. We said, yes, we can do it, and let's call it Go North. And we did it. And so in 2006, 
We traveled across the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, focused on the Gwich'in and the Nupia and oil drilling. In 2007, Chikaka, 80 miles across the Bering Strait. In fact, Sarah Palin can see it from her front deck. <laughs> and, and in 2008, we went across Fennel Scandia, Norway, Sweden, and Finland, and focused on the Sami. In 2009, back to my favorite place in the Arctic, Nunavut, the newest territory. And in 2010, crossed from Thule to the Neem Ice Research Station by dog sled. This is all done by dog sled. At the end of all these expeditions, we still realized that there was more. Because there was a disconnect what was happening in the way that the students were being educated and what they needed to learn to sustain themselves within their communities and the simple stuff like being able to speak to the elders. And we, I knew it was not just in the Arctic, but it was out throughout the entire world, and thus, urtication was born. And urtication is where we're traveling to every continent over the next four years doing these interviews on education and sustainability. So we've traveled already to Norway, Africa, and we just returned from Australia, and we will soon end up in Antarctica in 2014. We've had the type of impact that we wanted, getting millions of students involved. So why does this work? Well, it works for a number of reasons. Number one, just like this picture that I took in Chikaka shows, it's part of the story. You want to be part of the story that engages us. And that's what the students want to become part of. And to start that story, here's a little clip from us in Africa. <laughs> And we just recently return from an expedition to Australia. And this video is just off of Darwin and Galawinko as Richard shared his perspective on education and sustainability. Study about your language. If you come around to Arnhem Land of Australia with the Northern Territory, you're learning to my language. Important thing is so that you can understand my language, my background, where I came from. And you will uh, learning about me. I was learning about you. Understand one another, we can develop the country, wealthy country. The story that we want everyone to be part of is something that motivated students within an adventure learning series. We had timber tales, and this is what was happening on the trail from the perspective of one of our dogs. And I wrote it in the tent every Thursday. And we quickly came to find out that it was one of the most visited areas of the website. And after traveling to the Arctic for over six months, we flew back into the Minneapolis airport, came down the escalator. There were hundreds of students there waiting for us. And I realized at that point that Tim was more than a dog. He was now running for president. <laughs> and that is the power of the story. It's the self-narrative that you want the students to become part of, where they're there in the beginning, the heightened experience of what's happening in the exploration, and then at the end. The next point is what we've been talking about for a very long time. It's the idea of community. It's the idea of where our stories intersect with one another. We've tried to do it online for numerous years, but we've tried to take it to the next level. And this next level is what we're calling the Enviro Network. And the Enviro Network is where anyone can go online and share their perspectives on education, sustainability, or whatever it might be. And here, I'll show you a perspective from, again, the Canadian Arctic, as Charlie shares his ideas of what is happening. So as you see here, all these people have shared their perspectives online. We'll click on Charlie, and here's what he has to say. As ourselves, Inuit, will have to eventually adapt to the changes as well, like our animals do. Animals, as war was built, animals have adapt to different changes, like our same as humans will. In fact, I encourage you to go online at urtication.com and share your perspective on education and sustainability. The next thing is real-world issues. 
We don't want students to have to wait to get the information to them. We want it immediately, and that's what we do with adventure learning. It might be myself and others working in the tent on Friday, we call it an education day. You can see Goldie Gopher there on my stove. Um, on an education day, in order that it can get to the students in real time on Monday. Or it might be my colleague Charlie and I, as we're in Africa here working with the broadband global area network, even without electricity, being able to get that message out to the learners. Or it might be myself working with the Inuit students trying to do some data collection on snow water equivalency that is then shared within the curriculum and then sent out to students worldwide. Or just recently, we have Roger, who, li who lives in the outback, has a ranch of over 80,000 acres, sharing his perspective. By sustaining those high cattle numbers on the landscape when we had very poor seasons was when we saw a lot of the degradation occur, erosion, loss of species, um, oh, loss of species diversification. And that literally was only three weeks ago. And this is all shared in an online learning environment instantaneously to students with the curriculum so that they can get motivated about what's happening in the world. They can get motivated about education. They can become part of it. It might be a full update, as you see, as we scroll down here, it might be the daily updates. We spend the time writing literally in the tent or wherever we are in order to share this with the world. We also want this transformational learning. And how is it that we get to this point where students feel like they're part of it and that they're sharing? An argument against adventure learning is that it's an elite approach. Not everyone can have the money to write a grant or, or get a grant to go to the Arctic, to go to every continent. So we're taking it to the next level, and this next level is what we're calling adventure learning 2.0, where in fact we're taking our model, and now we're creating an environment that we're calling Explore 15, where students can go out and do their own explorations. So they get to go in their backyard, and they can research frogs um, in Minnesota, while someone else is researching frogs in New Orleans, and they can be connected because they are part of the adventure where they have their featured adventures and they're an active explorer. As you can imagine, traveling to all these continents, to the entire circumpolar regions of the Arctic, there's lots of images and there's lots of stories. In fact, I think that's many times the only reason I get invited out is to tell these stories. And in order for me to share this with you, I put a little photo montage together. My favorite stories. In 2004, we were crossing the Canadian Arctic, as I mentioned to you, for six months. We were out for 73 days, and we were approaching the small community of Baker Lake, an amazing community in the Canadian Arctic. And I was on the front team, and over the horizon came a light. And that's a good thing, because it's a snow machine, and you know you're going to have a trail on the way into the community, and you're also going to be able to stand up and be warm. And I skied out to him, and he got off his snow machine, and I extended my arm out to him, and I said, you have no idea how excited I am to meet you. I said, my name is Aaron Deering. 
and he goes, I know who you are. I recognize your voice from the internet. And this was in 2004 in the very small Inuit community. And what was happening is that they were using the curriculum. They were being part of the project. They were sharing their voices. And so now my challenge to you is this. Just as I was sitting here on the ice looking down, thinking about my next expiration, I want you to think about your next expiration. I want you to go out in your backyard. I want you to become part of the story. And let's change the face of education. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.